Namaskaram. The truth that everyone knew but no one had the courage to speak is revealed by Vivek Agnihotri ji on a massive scale through his film that shook the world, The Kashmir Files. Now the makers of the film are coming up with The Vaccine War, the film that is based on the disaster which again shook the whole world. The vaccine was invented by our scientists. But as Nana Patekar ji says in the trailer, how challenging it was. Even after the vaccine is officially rolled out for usage, the toolkit gang tried to induce fear in public and cause so many deaths. India can't do it. This is a very very important film. Everybody must watch it. Let's get to know more about the dangerous toolkit gang from the director of the film, Vivek Agnihotri ji. Namaskar, Namaskar, Vinod. So happy to be here with you. Thank you so much. Yesterday I was there in the premiere show and what I saw there, my whole life has been exposing this toolkit gang. But I saw many things which I myself baffled with. I don't know many things which you have shown in the film. So what is your research, Vivek ji? Should I give a little background how this film please, came? Please. Okay. So, see, when I was about to go to shoot the Kashmir files when the lockdown happened, so we were sitting at home. And I've always been very interested in spirituality, life, death, what's beyond, you know that. I keep writing my own version of philosophy uh, called creative consciousness. So I started studying a lot. And I said, for the first time in the history of humanity, the entire world has shut down. Every single person, seven and a half billion people in the world were locked in the room and wondering whether they are going to be alive tomorrow or not. Nobody has ever thought about death as much as we thought in that time. And how will we be saved? Will there be a medicine? Will there be a vaccine? And ultimately, the consensus was that this only vaccine can save everybody. Vaccine is made with a lot of pharma research, medical research and which is a huge market in a capitalistic world. And there are only two lobbies, which are the biggest lobbies. One is the arms lobby and the second is the pharma lobby. Whoever controls this lobby controls the world. You know that. Everybody is competing to control it. But they also do not let the new people come inside. And which is why you see for so many years, this entire R&D, pharma, R&D, the giants, is limited to few countries. And they don't let the other countries grow because then you have big markets. So when, so I was thinking about it, what's going to happen, what will happen? I came across few research reports, which later, out, later on turned out to be fake. There was one big report of Johns Hopkins University and Princeton University. It was published report like a toolkit kind of a report which said that about 30 20 25 30 40 crore people in india will be infected why would in the time of a pandemic anybody would print a report like this why would american university be so concerned about india then some indian journalists i won't name them it's for people to do research you are a great genius researcher you dig it out did a big primetime show and authenticated that. That created a lot of fear in people's mind. Everybody started panicking. And exactly that time, the discussion of vaccine also came out. That then after a few days, some journalists started saying, why India is not taking foreign vaccine? I won't name any, but basically they were talking about one particular brand of vaccine, which is very, uh, very much in news these days. So they said, why India is not taking this vaccine? And they started pressurizing. Government started building a narrative and a public opinion. And people don't know. Everybody thought that foreign vaccine is the best vaccine. So the people also started saying, yes, why the government is not taking, we should do it, take it. And they also ran a campaign at the same time, which was wishing that more and more people die in India. They were saying, no, not 1,000 people have died. There are 500,000 people have died. Everything is a lie. And they created a lot of fear, insecurity. It is done basically so that government kneels down and buys their Mac. They realize India is going to be the biggest market. The size of India is equivalent to the entire Europe, US put together. That's when I said, let me study this. 
and we started digging. How I found this toolkit? Don't ask me. I can tell you in private. But then we found out that a toolkit was circulating. It's not that toolkit is always bad. Yeah. I always say if there's a flood, and you have to instruct the collector and everybody how to take care of people who are uh, victims of flood, then a toolkit is very good. It's like a protocol. What needs to be done? So that common denominator, without thinking, apply without applying brain, can do that. But in the time when people are insecure, everybody is scared of death. Who are these people who want more people to die? Only a mass murderer would want that. So I said, let's dig it, and then the research which came out. So research happened at two levels. One was pure science research with Indian Council of Medical Research scientists from there, scientists from National Institute of Virology. So all these scientists we worked with in details. I also worked with uh, closely with some other uh, doctors and scientists. On the other hand, we also uh, did research on how media influencers, this toolkit gang, was working, and we realized that all they wanted was that more and more and more people die in India, so that government panics, public panics, and they can sell as many vaccines as they want. And if they sell so many vaccines to India, and they capitalize so such a big pharma market in India, then the government and India becomes a puppet in their hands. That's what these people have been doing uh, throughout, and we have very honestly, sincerely shown it in the film. Yeah, this is a very important thing, Vivek ji. Always the toolkit gang tries to put this image in people's mind that Bharat is a land of snake charmers. No, we are a land of scientists as well. And your work in trying to convey this through the film, the vaccine war, it's amazing, Vivek ji. So, what are the struggles you went through in collecting the data, the research, Vivek ji? See, first of all, the minute you say you want to make a film on science, so the first, uh, first is what is called Bollywood. The Bollywood thinking is why make a film on science when you can earn money with dance and uh, songs, yeah. and the common wisdom was make Kashmir Files Part Two, you'll make hundreds of crores of rupees. But we, I mean anybody, anybody, all these big stars or directors, producers, studios, multinational studios, they would have gone and made Kashmir Files Two. Everybody does that. We didn't do that. We took the money we earned. Put into this very risky project. No glamour, no hero, nothing in the lab. People are wearing masks. There is, I mean, even sometimes I also had problems recognizing actors who's who because they were wearing masks and the the kit PPE kits. But we decided to make this for two reasons. Number one, we did a research with Indian Institute of Management, and we figured out that despite the virus being there and the vaccine being there. Nobody knew which field of science it is. It is virology. People didn't even know. If we make a film and even hundred children get influenced and join this lie, then India has a good future. So there was an IT revolution in two thousand. Now it should be bio uh, technology revolution in India. So that was one intent of making this film. Second is that I wanted people to know clearly who are the real enemies of India. Very often we think Pakistan is the real enemy of India, but I personally believe that the real Pakistanis live inside India. The enemy part of Pakistan lives in India. So our war is not, of course, from outside also. But if these people refuse to work on a payroll to the enemies of India, which are sitting in America or in powerful countries, then we don't have the kind of threat. Because if there is a war on the border, you can fight with guns and jets and all that. How do you fight a war if the person sitting next to you in a plane or in a train is the enemy of Bharat? How do you? You don't know. Or you go to a government office and there is somebody you are dealing with, and he is an enemy of Bharat working on somebody else's payroll. How do you know that at 9 p.m. the news you are listening to, you know? Is not funded by uh, the enemies of India. What if they are instructed to slowly, 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 like a slow poison, create insecurity? What is the guarantee that they are not attacking our cultural uh, leaders? What is the guarantee they are not attacking our spiritual leaders? What is the guarantee they are not trying to shake the foundations of Indian culture? And I realize 
that they are operating at various level there is a info war going on in india there is a cultural war going on there is a cyber war going on and there is a legal war going on in it and vaccine war is part of that exactly that's what i was so baffled with in fact i got scared in the second half of the film the way this journalist is trying to get away with propelling fake news about the vaccine because i put myself completely into this the info war is there a way to defeat this toolkit gang vivek ji see i you know i am for last 10 years i am fighting this yes. okay you started you are fighting more uh, now and i the reason i first i want to say why i have come here i have come here they are right now our film is there we have success of kashmir files all top podcasters want to do that i have refused to go there because all of them do it for money i don't give any money but they want to do with me because then they'll get lot of uh, views and they'll earn money from me i said i'll only go to people who are genuine bharti warriors okay i did one with ajit bharti i am doing it with you and if you i'll do with one or two more people who are genuinely fighting as a dharma i have spent 10 years fighting urban nexus who are these urban nexus people in india can i explain the whole science of this thing the fight is at two levels one is the socio cultural level and another is at political economic level okay india is an emerging superpower and in this competitive world nobody wants india to succeed don't get carried away by white house reception of mr modi which is fine that is all optics but at the same time they also plan how to sabotage india's interest we are lucky that we have a very powerful leader who's fighting the world like you fight or i fight uh, so we are safe there so they want india to fail on many fronts okay economy and by creating a political narrative that the minority is not safe in india or there is uh, sab dare hue hain and the majority is killing everybody these kind of narratives they create basically to create destabilize the country politically you have to be very clearly you have to understand this how do how will they do that one they create international pressure they use media they use second is they file lots of cases the minute government says okay we are going to build a express way here or we are going to build a airport here hundreds of people file cases uh, against uh, making that project gets stalled and then for years there is no development so they they basically stall the development destabilize the economy or some big industrialist then they will uh, do a character assassination of that person so the whole industry comes down stock market goes down that's the tactics they use second politically they use is they say your democracy is bad you have no free speech you have no this i was in america we know just few days back and i always go in the only place in the world where there is no free speech you have more free speech in russia and china the only place where you cannot say what you want to say is america you can't say anything the minute you say something somebody takes out a victim card and sues you so you have to say all nice things beautiful things you know that so they say india doesn't have free speech india doesn't have democracy then they damage legally your economy and the second thing what they do is they attack your social cultural or religious spiritual institutions they attack they would attack say baba ramdev they will attack sadguru they will attack shri shri okay so what happened is millions and millions of people get insecure am i following the right person or not you know am i doing right or not so their biggest weapon is creating doubt once there is doubt you get insecure so they create doubt in your mind and once they create collective consciousness becomes doubtful then they take advantage of that and how it is done in india my understanding is there are two kinds of money's coming in from the eastern side the red money comes in the communist money okay and from the western side uh, the islamic money comes in and there is a kind of a nexus between islamic and communist their kind of you know that and politically that is reflected in dalit politics and various kind of things and they make groups so this entire corridor which they have created between red money 
and the terrorism money these are the two industries so terrorism industry and the communist industry and they are hand in glove tell me why no communist has ever criticized the terrorism in kashmir never they will never do it right who are the people who say kashmir files story is not true the same islamic and communist uh, combination congress is a puppet in the hands of communists and islamists congress Ra rahul gandhi doesn't have any his own voice he doesn't have his own voice so whatever he is he's a puppet whatever the master the puppeteer does he says that so that's why congress says this film is uh, not true now about the vaccine tell me why shouldn't india make vaccine okay why but right from day one they were against it they wrote fake articles they uh, uh, got brand ambassadors authors and uh, writers and intellectuals and historians and politicians all kinds of things there are speeches which i have taken out from the film initially we put but i'll put it on social media now and you know all of them okay the chief minister of delhi mr arvind kejriwal kai sari vaccine aa chuki hai international market mein johnson and johnson hai moderna hai pfizer hai aur bhi bahut sari hain तो इनसे सबसे केंद्र सरकार बात करके केंद्र सरकार इनसे सारा इंपोर्ट करे और राज्यों के अंदर बांट ही हैज बीन प्रमोटिंग फाइजर एंड फॉरेन वैक्सीन ही इज टेकिंग माइक इन पी आर एंड वाई दिस गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट टेकिंग इट नो बडी आस्ट हिम वाई वी शुड टेक इट दैट्स अ फेलियर ऑफ मीडिया सो पीपल हु आर स्टैंडिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ हिम नो बडी आस्ट हे चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ डेली if india is being able to make its own vaccine and is being able to be self reliant why are you promoting these vaccines why nobody asked mr rahul gandhi that why are you giving these speeches that a tsunami is coming a tsunami is coming and india can't do it even if tsunami is coming and if you want to be the future prime minister of this country you don't do it going in press conferences and screaming tsunami is coming and creating fear and doubt and insecurity in people's mind to create panic under when panic is there government comes under pressure and therefore government takes wrong decision thank god we are lucky that we have a prime minister who does not swayed by these things and he stood the leadership of this country took a very big risk they said no to foreign vaccines blackmail it's not that they were against them they were blackmailing you have seen the film they were blackmailing those points even i do not know that they have come from their own application it's not that i have invented usually when we research online we don't get to know these things that you put out in the film vivek ji could you please talk about few points uh, why the government rejected uh, pfizer vaccine yeah for example see technical points i won't go but the main thing i think which was against the interest of india that they wanted to indian government to give a huge advance to them and if they don't follow the timelines and if they don't follow the delivery lines if the supply fails then they were not answerable will you do a deal like this never will you give and invest i am asking your audience would you go invest 1 crore rupees in a property where he says okay property is not ready we won't refund your money or you go and book a car and you give them uh, 10 lakh rupees and they say if the car doesn't come we won't refund money or if the car comes without the engine still we won't refund money you know you can't do that and the second thing was if you have any dispute or anything you have to go to the uh, new york court this is strange and thank god we didn't do that so on the other hand the leadership said no to them and we took a risk of making our own vaccine the most important thing is that's a substandard vaccine compared to indian vaccine ah uh, now it is being proved so the journalist who was writing these articles calling our own vaccine substandard so that government comes under pressure and they were uh, singing songs in praise of uh, pfizer and other vaccines uh, ultimately the court ordered them to take out all 14 fake articles and the result is film is they haven't seen the film film is not released as yet but they started pa panicking on twitter and i want to tell your audience it's such a shameful thing that this convicted journalist you know the guilty journalist by law it's not that i am calling her they started attacking the scientists of icmr on social media they started targeting and attacking those people so those people they are government employees so they blocked her once they blocked her then she went on to shaming them saying they are blocking me they are why won't you block somebody who's threatening uh, a senior scientist these are the world's one of the most reputed scientists 
they write in lancet magazines they go uh, give lectures in international uh, magazines dr pragya yadav is the director of bsl4 lab only 6 bsl4 labs are approved by who bsl means the highest security safety lab bio safety level 4 Wuhan lab you know uh, PS4 it's exactly the same PSR4 the only difference is we are a generally safe lab that is an unsafe lab so these journalists are attacking them now tell me vaccine war the film is coming it celebrates indian scientists and especially the women scientists why all these congress party aap party are against me they are lynching me on social media they are saying this film is bad they should not work it's propaganda etc without seeing the film film is not released as yet yeah you know the whole world the scientists all over the world have seen senators have seen in america congressmen they are standing and clapping giving standing ovation i'm tremendous job i'm feeling so proud that i'm a indian and, and these people now tell me who's guilty who's guilty are they on payroll of somebody else why would somebody not appreciate and admire india's great efforts the role of toolkit gang to question the government remind and correct the government is not happening it's clearly anti national to destroy the government to do a hit job on the government so the question that arises is should we live with this frustration or is there any steps that we can take to defeat this vivek ji see we need uh, 10 more vivek agnihotris and you need 100 more vinods <laughs> what i say is i i always tell young people that talk about it don't be scared they take advantage of our silence see a typical indian hindu family how is it they indian family i would say middle class they will get up in the morning they'll tell their they'll do their puja they'll tell their children be good citizens go to the office try to do good work come back and just so they don't have political ambitions these people have political ambitions so all the young boys and girls they should do research and expose them in the film we have also shown a graph how it operates you know and you have to understand that most of the things like human rights organizations are actually not human rights organizations yes yes correct free press is not free press fact checkers are not fact checkers all these people are agenda peddlers all these people are there to destabilize this country create conflict and riots if you take out these so called fact checkers from indian scenario there will be no hindu muslim uh, conflict. conflict trust me i guarantee it is my conviction i can prove it that you stop these uh, fact checkers and human rights uh, groups and ngos there will be no hindu muslim fight in india 100% do i agree with it right yeah. they create conflict and they blame somebody else for the conflict So are you going to make a film in future about the info war and legal war as well See legal war I don't know because I am not very good at legal uh, stuff uh, but I am making a film called the Delhi files which deals with the legalities of all the things we are talking about So it's a very serious film we are talking about it basically is about the why uh, see I personally believe that the world's longest and continuous genocide is of hindus starting from aurangzeb it has never stopped or from there we have been killed and the britishers killed then in during partition it was a massacre after massacres of hindus and then you saw in 1971 bangladesh what happened in pakistan same thing is happening and when i say hindu sikhs are also involved in it sindhis are also involved in it. this entire uh, race uh, which belongs to bharat uh, that then it happened in so many riots here and there kashmir it happened and recently you saw the attempt in shahin bag the same kind of stuff happened mopla it happened in mopla from khilafat movement you know why is it happening if let's understand okay i want to very openly talk about it so we you know in india the only conflict is hindu muslim conflict the po- all politics comes over there socialist and capitalist also ultimately uh, come over there why nobody questions why it is there why it is there it is there because it is being created by a ideology called the khilafat ideology which means uh, when partition happened some muslims decided to live in india i don't know kannada 
But if I decide choose to live in Bangalore, I have an option. You go out of Bangalore or live in Bangalore, and if I decide to live here, why won't I learn little Kannada? Why won't I adopt some customs and this thing? And why would I fight against the original uh, citizens of this place? Right? Unless somebody motivates me, unless somebody says, "I think Hindi must chabi lagana," and that's what is happening, and everybody is happy with that. because they are beneficiaries of hindu muslim conflict and the same beneficiaries are also the beneficiaries of terrorism industry in kashmir and afghanistan and pakistan wherever it is there is a com- common ground amongst these beneficiaries and these beneficiaries are very heavily funded you made a video you know who funds them and which groups fund them they are all interlinked uh with each other So I think the best way uh, is to study them, expose them, and talk fearlessly. The only problem is if we start talking diplomatically, then we are whitewashing the real issue. That's why I'm making these kind of films. Instead of making Kashmir Files Part Two and make lots of money, I have put in whatever money I earned into this film, so that I don't care what happens, but the people should know who's your enemy. and uh, one takeaway from your discussion is uh, whenever people get to see a picture with bill gates and modi ji it doesn't mean that bill gates is a good guy never ever think prime minister has to shake hands with everybody as a courtesy call so don't think it means they are friends chairman of the board of director of the top institute icmr <coughs> director general of the icmr and what he went through he knows that there, it is a war he knew that it is a war and his employees are not prepared for it and we have all women scientists um, in reality this is all real this is not a created story first of all so what he went through how did you get to explore this character see in his book this is based on his book called going viral so dr balram bhargo has given hints but not written everything but once i started talking to him he is a media shy person he doesn't uh, talk to media and there's a dialogue also nana says there's no point fighting uh, media they are all like pigs you know so uh, but then i started talking to him his family people around him his colleagues and one thing i realized that all of them suffered because of media media was attacking the soldiers who were fighting a war right it's like there is a india pakistan war and our soldiers and majors and colonels who are fighting over there these people start abusing them they do when pulwama happened the same thing uh, they they don't trust our own soldiers in kashmir for so many years for 35 years they have maintained a narrative that the army goes and rapes women till the time kashmir files came and then people understood i used to meet army personnel uh and all these soldiers and majors would tell me that they are very hurt because of this crpf people would tell me they are very hurt because of this now wherever i go in any airport anywhere they sir thank you for our dignity you showed it to this is what they do look at the history these people the toolkit gang as you call it or urban naxals whatever you want to call them they have celebrated naxals they always said naxals are good people they have celebrated dacoits okay they celebrate terrorists and they celebrate arundhati roy okay do you see any connection and they give awards to yasin malik i do i say do i need to say anything else they celebrate the death of our generals bipin rawat yes they celebrated death of uh, general they wish our prime minister and our uh, general chief of army staff have our national security advisor the one of the greatest uh, uh, intelligence person mr ajit dover they wish them deaths during covid if you remember people forget they were wishing deaths to all these people they are such pathetic souls such such pathetic souls and the only thing is they can be bought for a very small amount of money most of the cases they also do not know what they are doing if you see pallavi ji says a dialogue in the film towards the end she says who are these people nobody knows where do they come from even they don't know who they are working for and that's the problem even they don't know i uh, see i am i am a filmmaker okay and you can easily acha vivek ji you want to make a film i'll give you some money etc make friends with you and you make me say things in public public is thinking that i am saying so i know about it that's why i'm saying it i'm influenced by it but actually you have influenced me and you somebody else has influenced you somebody else has influenced you so money is moving like this 
it's so unfortunate that all the filmmakers of bollywood are the victims they made this kind of films which put hindutva down for so many ages now one person vivek ji i mean you are you are a hard nut for them but i am not bollywood i am outside bollywood exactly uh, could you please talk a few lines about that bad about this oh this uh, this is our production uh, company and i this buddha does not mean uh, gautam buddha it simply comes from sanskrit word buddha uh, which means enlightenment when you are enlightened okay so uh, we believe in hindu philosophy that every child is born enlightened is slowly the society dulls your mind so bad habits and wrong habits all you have to do is with spirituality you have to clean it and discover your own buddha i started it basically when i was teaching lots of students so i used to call that model i am buddha so i used to tell them you are buddha you don't have to look outside discover your inner uh, buddha so that's how it started and we never changed the name of the company because our first film came from this name I am Buddha is a module I was teaching in a workshop I was doing in Indian School of Business which is I am Buddha uh, a globe uh, uh, workshop for global leadership and from there the idea of this urban nexels came that was the first time in research what you are doing now I understood in 2010 that there is a big gang which is being funded by some big powers and how they are operating so we made a film called Buddha in a traffic jam that changed my life then we never change the name of this i am buddha so yeah so the toolkit gang against the indian covid do you think they are defeated now in a way in the pharma industry yes in fact recently in g20 it was um, i understand that what uh, the conclusion which g20 came to that the three biggest achievements of india out of them covid uh, this vaccine manufacturing uh foreign minister uh, jay shankar ji i think he said in some interview two three days ago that it was recognized unanimously that our vaccine manufacturing is the best uh, uh thing we have done uh in us i was there everybody every senator congressman or other influencers media people i met general public all of them believe that india did a great job during covid and with vaccine it's a big achievement one thing is for sure that now india has entered the club we may not be a lifetime member of the club right now maybe we are just an associate member but that is the beginning and slowly we will become a lifetime member also so these people have failed over there very badly they have failed now the only agenda they are left with in next one year or so is uh, playing the communal religious uh, this thing and how it will be played is that they will take out all uh, pictures videos this and that and blame it on hindu muslim conflicts without telling the real reason then like i said in the film some influencer will post it then some fact checker will come and he will authenticate it and after 3 months or after the elections you will realize it was all fake okay so just calling yourself fact checker doesn't make you a fact checker fact checker is a is never a person first of all because a person can never do it fact checker is a system fact checker you have to create a system which is n- of course people create the software but it is not people driven it is impossible for human beings to be absolutely factual it is impossible nobody in this world can be 100% factual okay for example i'll give one example so people understand suppose uh, you go to buy a ticket somewhere and tickets very few tickets are left if there is a person sitting over there you can influence it but if you are going and pressing buttons and taking out a ticket then you can never uh, do that so factual means it has to be absolutely no intervention of human judgment at that point of time number 1 which is not true all these fact checkers in india are single people second they are only fact checking of one group of people never of the other group of people and their intent is very clear the way they do this so called uh idiotic fact checking is to create hindu muslim conflict here and to peddle the agenda the mainstream agenda of our enemies that muslims are not safe in india okay i work with all the muslims all the times so i have friends who are muslims i uh, know so many people every indian is working on day to day basis hindus and muslims are working together tell me who is not safe 
we don't have mass killings in india we don't have serial killers in india why we are not safe but they create this agenda all the times that there is no democracy in india there is no free speech in india and muslims are not safe in india and this three point agenda they publicize everywhere vivek ji uh, could you please tell us a little bit about the geopolitical war behind the vaccine so see it all begins with gain of function research this gain of function research was uh, a collaboration between couple of uh, agencies or countries or parties or research agencies america happens to be one of the uh, uh, strongest part of it led by dr fauci okay and ps4 lab which is bsl4 lab in wuhan is where this was taking place it is beyond doubt now in my mind there is no doubt that they were reengineering the virus because the law of virology now i stand corrected but this is the understanding i have been given to understand by some top scientists there is a law in virology like your law of gravity similarly your law of virology which is any virus which spreads very fast is not fatal like flu you know influenza any virus which is very fatal doesn't uh, spread very fast like aids aids is a very slow spread but it's fatal once you get aids then it's very difficult to me for the first time in the history of virology there was a virus which was spreading very fast and it's as fatal it's a killer virus it was killing millions of deaths all over the world this creates a lot of doubts in people's mind who was leading this right i am not against dr fauci but he is the guy who's leading it and he never came out clean on this issue dr fauci has always always gone wishy washy about it he has beaten about the she has never came clean he is a scientist world looks up to okay he has to come and say no uh, ps4 has nothing to do with it wuhan has nothing to do with it then he has to support it with evidences now everything is a statement you know us congress has questioned him american media questions him scientific community questions him these are dicey people okay i am i don't want to discredit him for his science for his uh, uh, he is a senior person undoubtedly is one of the greatest scientists we have uh, uh, but in case of corona virus his integrity can be questioned by even somebody who doesn't have too much of knowledge correct and i feel that having all the scientific knowledge they give importance to propaganda and they give importance to keeping india as a slave to the west isn't there a dialogue in the film yes. he she she he says you are a science editor not a political editor what does she say everything is politics boss including science yes. that is unfortunate matter of the day uh <clears throat> two important uh, questions we begged you to conclude one thing is about your security you are uh, you are no less than a warrior you are no less than a soldier uh, making films and exposing truth how are you uh, maintaining your security see after kashmir files so all the after all these fatwas are were issued it's very unfortunate we know it really hurts me not because i am involved but it hurts me uh, before me so many people made uh, films on kashmir issue some great directors and producers and actors stars uh those films celebrated terrorists they they gave sympathy to terrorists they justified terrorists nothing happened to them but when you i made a film for the first time which questioned terrorism industry then fatwas are issued against me they what does this show it means the people who are issuing fatwa are guilty not me isn't it yeah. why if they want to shut my voice means they are guilty and after that there were a lot of uh, threat perceptions uh, so one day i got a call and from intelligence agency and they said that you have to have a y plus security and that's how the security came in now a lot of people i am from i have lived in delhi i know a lot of people think it's a status symbol or you are a vip or something this is a bogus argument it's a prison it's a prison somebody is always following you and you can't sit alone in the car you can't speak uh, this thing somebody is following you i have not been able to travel with my children in last one year i don't go out to to shopping places to eat outside in restaurants nowhere my life is i don't travel i i used to be a great traveler take a bike go to ladakh do these things i can't do that i can't drive a bike anymore i can't drive myself so life has become a prison but 
initially i was very irritated and i been calling uh, intelligence um, uh, agency in delhi saying please take them off but then they explained it to me made me understand that how dangerous these people are okay and they want to destroy one by one all the warriors okay so i understood now i have little surrender to my own prison so that's what the security issue is and things keep happening i was in goa one day i was meditating when i opened my eyes there was somebody from punjab a boy had come to this thing then finally he was caught arrested and stuff like that these kind of things happen on social media if you see they are lynching me all the time threatening me including my daughter they take out her pictures put it right ugly dirty things but my daughter is a very brave beautiful wonderful person and she is as uh, fearless as me so that's why i am i don't do anything but imagine if i if she wasn't like that and how psychologically they are trying to impact my family so that's the problem so sad we make you feel so sorry for the kind of life even you are also people keep threatening you they keep reporting you i know your videos are being taken out yes and um, i really wish we want you as i mean you have this wonderful skill of making films i'm telling the story all i want to tell them is that you were born courageous you were born fearless a small child when you are 4 year old 5 year old you're not scared of anything a child goes and he take catches hold of a snake also a child goes fight and plays with any dog a child you leave him in a dark room he'll cry for some time but then he again children are born god has created us courageous fearless fear is something with the society gives us and right now there is lot of fear is being created of being a bharatiya okay i think everybody has to discover their inner soul and i also tell young people like swami vivekanand used to say even sadguru says that that little bit of spirituality helps you are young doesn't mean you can't be spiritual you do everything be spiritual and spirituality doesn't mean sitting and meditating spiritual is a way of life how you live your life and when you understand yourself your own spiritual being then you become fearless my life changed after i start when i started diving into a spiritual part of my life it changed suddenly i have i have fear losing nothing you love your mother we are the only society in the world only country in the world which calls our country bharat ma it's a ma mother so like our own mother we must also fight for our own mother and only when you realize that we are the oldest surviving civilization in the world and the all civilizations have died every single civilization in the world has perished only we have survived the oldest living continuous civilization it has not happened just like that it's not a magic it has happened because there have been swami vivekanand there have been shivaji there have been vivek agnyotri there are narendra modi there are vinod we are all fighting so i want youth to be inspired and fight for the country do your job take out just one hour every day just research research will open your eyes once your eyes are open your conscience will tell you what to do you don't need to read any book for that fantastic wonderful vivek ji so if there is no questioning voice every idiot will govern us that's the message thank you thank, thank you so much for your presence vivek ji and i wish you all the best once again i want to repeat I have just come here so that more and more people watch your channel and they they don't have to agree with you what you say okay but your style is that you open the eyes and people can go back and research on this and use their own judgment yes very true and the vaccine war is a must watch especially for the women the emotion the from the mother and a scientist unfortunately we did not have many scientists <clears throat> the emotion that you uh portrayed in the film taking the women characters and the scientists the core essence of the film is so beautifully made with so will you do me a favor can i request you yeah. for something see uh our film the toolkit gang has asked uh, the critics and reviewers not to review our film okay. there are two kinds of people agenda driven second money driven and money we don't give to anybody we can't afford we don't give to anybody and it's unethical also to give money and get good things written yeah. so If you have seen the film, uh, whether you liked it or not, can you do a review of the film? Hundred percent. So that I want 
independent people to do reviews why bother about professional review let's create our own ecosystem review the film honestly so that people decide on their own whether they want to see it done done you will get a review video on 28th 28th film is going to yeah. release right in all languages okay. how many theaters may i know i don't know whatever i get okay. we are a fighters we fight till the last minute. but for sure there is going to be a worldwide hit and thank it's you. going to shake the world thank you yeah. thank you thank, thank you. you so much for being here